obviously in the past we have always had challenges. We've had wars, we've had uh, economic challenges, we've had globalization, European challenges. But what is happening actually in this decade is that four of these trends are actually coming together quite rapidly. And what confuses us is how to deal with these trends. Never have we seen so much pressure come together in such a short period of time. The politicians have a very hard time to internalize in global challenges. It's really where it boils down to. Election cycles becoming shorter, politicians becoming shorter in their decision making as well, and not addressing as a result the global challenges. What you basically see is wealth, as I mentioned, is more and more concentrated in fewer people, but power is more and more dispersed. And that creates a lot of tension in society. Wealth concentrated, power dispersed. We've connected very soon in about a decade's time. We have 50 billion connected devices in the world. And the consumers are discovering that in the absence of governments moving things forward, that they actually can make their voices heard better than before by aggregating. We've lived uh, as if resources would always be there for generations to come. But because the globalization has made this economy grow so fast, we've grown about 270% in the last 40 years. We're going to double again in the next 15 years. Our global GDP from 90 billion will go before this, this is over to 180, 200 billion. And already today we see these, these pressures that we have on our planetary boundaries. We simply are using too much. And unfortunately it's again not equally distributed. The, the top 1.2 billion people in the world use 75% of the world's resources. The crisis of morality. Not many people went to jail. But it made us realize that what we were doing was actually not sustainable. Although we've lifted many people out of poverty, we did that at enormous cost in terms of government debt or private debt. We did it at enormous consumption, over consumption. And we did that, frankly, by leaving too many people behind. Now, any system where people don't feel they're participating or where they're left behind ultimately will reject itself like a cancer in the body. If our system is so wonderful, why are there still a billion people going to bed every night, hungry, not knowing if they can wake up the next day? Why are there still 2.4 billion people not having access to clean water and, and hygiene? Why do we still have two billion children, two million children die every year just of the infectious diseases like pneumonia, diarrhea. Why is a child dying every six seconds in this world? Why are there 190 million young people unemployed? Too many of our business people and too many of our government, government people have just stood on the sidelines and let this happen. So the good thing is that although the, the world's citizens have low trust in us, in CEOs and in others, uh, they do expect business to be part of the solution. And increasingly we see that if business doesn't act responsibly, consumers are voting with their wallet. Business should move from just simply saying, I have a license to operate, they should go to a license to lead. They should take a higher level of interest in where they can make positive contributions. CSR is not good enough anymore. Michael Porter's shared value is not good anymore. That's basically concepts of, I'll be sure that I don't harm, less bad. We need to have businesses take a proactive position in actually improving the state of the world. For the first time in history, we could be the generation in the next 15 years that irreversibly wipes out poverty in the world. That's very exciting to me. But we have to take that ownership, that, in, that license to lead to do this. We need different leaders of tomorrow that have some different skills as well. The first one is you need to have leaders that are driven by a deeper purpose. I don't think you can run in this volatile world, businesses anymore, if you don't have this deeper purpose of why you're here in the first place. You need people that work a little bit more in partnership. These challenges are enormous. If they would have been that easy, someone would have solved them already. I think there has never been a better time to build a better world for all. I personally believe that this is the best opportunity to make the biggest impact. <laughs>